Hello, my name is Radhika, I am a second year medical student and today I want to talk about how to do well in your OSCEs. I made a video last year about my year one OSCE and I'll be honest, I wasn't really that happy with my OSCE mark and I think there were a couple of things I could have done differently. So I thought I would make this video so you can learn from my mistakes and do well in your OSCE. I'm going to split this video into two parts. Tip number one, link OSCE stations with relevant topics. So this is something that I have done a lot in second year and I feel like I've received better feedback from both patients and facilitators because I've done this. What I mean by this is every time you cover a topic in university, do the relevant OSCE station. So for example, if you're studying gastroenterology and you're doing the pathology, let's say you're learning about Crohn's disease and colitis, then do a gastro history taking station and do an abdominal examination. This helps you consolidate what you've learned and it also means that you're better prepared for your clinical years. To aid my OSCE preparation, I've been using OSCE Stop and their amazing resources. OSCE Stop is a top rated advanced virtual learning hub dedicated to helping you excel in your medical school exams. With your subscription, you have access to everything you need to know for finals with over 250 simulated OSCE stations, interpretations, key learning facts and guidelines from NICE simulated cases and more. They have a great question bank which is mapped to the MLA. I've been using this to help me revise for my med school finals which are in a week and I feel so much more confident. If you're a preclinical student, don't worry, there are plenty of anatomy, physiology and basic science questions along with examinations and histories that you're likely to cover. My friends and I have been using OSCE stock quite a lot. We either like to do random stations or we'll do a targeted station linked to a topic we've covered. One of us will act as the simulated patient, one of us marks using the handy mark sheet and then one of us gives feedback and it's a really really good system so if you want to use a reliable and realistic learning platform to help you with your clinical examinations and finals click the link in my description box for more information and thank you so much to OSCE Stop for sponsoring this video. Tip number two is to record yourself. I mentioned this in my MMI video and I've mentioned this before in other videos, but I like to record myself whenever I'm speaking. Yes, I make videos online, so it's kind of like my job. But at the same time, I think it really is helpful to do this for your OSCE prep. It's amazing and a little bit humbling when you watch yourself because you see how many things you do wrong. You see the annoying things about your communication style, you see your posture, you see the way you look and I'm telling you all these things definitely do matter in the OSCE. Remember that patients are going to be judging you in your OSCE and the actual examiner is as well. So you want to make sure that you are communicating properly, you're explaining things in very simple, easy to understand terms. It's quite a basic thing but it will massively improve your communication and your overall mark in your if you pick up on these things from the beginning and that's why recording yourself helps. Tip number three is to practice with friends. So my friends and I use the OSCE Stop book and the OSCE Stop platform to help with this. I think it's really useful to practice with friends because it kind of makes OSCE prep more enjoyable. It's better to act it out. It's better to actually practice with friends because then they can give you brutally honest feedback. Try and book library rooms or maybe find empty tutorial rooms, that's what we do. Or you can even meet up in people's houses, do a potluck and then do OSCEs after. I've done that before and it's fun, but it also is actually worthwhile doing, especially the earlier you do it, the better. Two things to remember when you're practicing with friends though. Number one, do not view your friends as competition. At the end of the day, the NHS needs all of us. You gotta actually support your friends and uplift them and vice versa. They should be doing the same for you. It's all about being in this together, as cliche and cringe as that sounds. The second thing to remember is that you can always like split the cost of resources. I know that some people end up splitting the cost for tendon hammers or ophthalmoscopes or even blood pressure instruments and yeah it just makes it a lot cheaper as well. Tip number four is to think of it like a play. This is a tip a doctor I was on placement with told me and it really stuck in my mind. Imagine you're like an actor in a play. You have a script and you just have to learn that and regurgitate it when you go out on stage or into the examination room. And that's literally all it is. My medical school gives us these documents and they're standardized and they basically just have a lot of questions on them. So what I do is I compile them and I just write them down as questions as if it's my script and I've just tried to memorize as many of them as I possibly can. Obviously this is context dependent. Not all questions are going to apply to every case. I'm gonna to have to use my brain a little bit. But if you are rote learning something, OSCEs at the end of the day, it is just kind of like acting out, especially in your preclinical years. 
So I would do the MSK anatomy, then I would do some of the pathology, and then I would move on to doing the history taking and then the examinations. I would record myself and I would probably get through like six examinations working from top to bottom. So I would do the spine, the hands, the um, lower limb, the upper limb, the hips, the knees, and you can get through a lot of stations very, very fast because often these scripts are like the same. They're just worded slightly differently. So that's just putting it into context. That's how I do my OSCE prep. And I try to do OSCE prep at least every two to three days because at the end of the day, it is muscle memory. Remember, with OSCEs, practice makes perfect. The more you learn your script and the earlier you start, the better you will perform on the actual day. So if you were like me last year and you were shy, you were a little bit quiet at times, you probably didn't put yourself out there when it came to doing clinical skills on placement. That is a very big mistake that I made last year and it's something that I've massively avoided doing this year. Every time I get the opportunity to practice a skill, I do it. Even if I know I'm going to be terrible and I'm going to make a fool out of myself, I would rather make a fool out of myself as a student than as a doctor. If you haven't done that and your OSCE is literally in a week, here are some tips that you can use to prepare for your OSCE closer to the time and on the actual day itself, how you can do well, or at least, you know, pass the OSCE. Tip number one, this is very important, slightly superficial, but very important. It's to remember that your appearance matters. Imagine you're a patient and your doctor looks unkempt. They look like they haven't slept properly. They look like they haven't showered. Their scrubs are not clean. They don't look presentable. How would you feel? Chances are you would not want to be touched by that doctor. That is something that you want to avoid in your OSCE. Make sure you look presentable. That's why I said earlier on to record yourself because the way you walk into the room and the way you speak, it immediately creates an either a good impression or a bad impression. Also make sure you smell good because you want to make sure that you're actually like giving off a good positive energy because that will help you do well as well. Tip number two is to care about the little things. Saying small things like, oh my hands are cold if you're about to palpate for something or saying to the patient, you've got a lovely smile. Let's say you were doing a cranial nerve exam and they were showing you their teeth. Those are small things. But those are the things that set you apart from other students. Now, it's very important that when you do this, it's done properly. If someone is talking about something quite sensitively, you don't want to be interrupting them with a compliment because chances are that's not what they want to hear. However, when done properly, it really does make patients feel more comfortable. The key takeaway message with this one is to not say things just for the sake of saying things. You have to naturally be empathetic and it has to come from within. You can't just say something because it's going to sound insincere and the the patient is going to pick up on it and so is the examiner. I had a patient tell me once that I had a lovely smile and that was because I was just smiling whenever I was doing the examination and I was talking to him and that meant that he felt confident enough to see me again. The patient mark is definitely something that people overlook but it is important because although it might not contribute to your overall OSCE mark, it does matter because it shows whether or not you're going to be a good communicator in the future as a doctor and whether or not your clinical communication overall is good. Another thing is to be mindful of your timing. Don't rush a station because that looks unprofessional, but don't speak too slowly either. This is where practice comes in because the more times you do something, the faster you get it done. If you're talking to the person, make sure your introduction and your explanation are not lasting longer than a minute and a half, for example. Whenever you reach the warning bell, um, usually that would be around like the four to five minute mark. Make sure that you are at least three quarters of the way done in your station. Also, another time-saving trick is to avoid using medical jargon. If you use medical terms like hypertension instead of high blood pressure, I guarantee the patient is going to be like, what's that? And then you're going to have to explain it and then you're going to waste time. And now my final tip, if one station goes bad, knock it off. I was really dumb in my first year OSCE. Some of my personal favorites include sanitizing my stethoscope after I had completed the station instead of before and saying it was for the next person. Um, another one that I did was I told a healthy patient that she had stage 2 hypertension. Um, that was after not listening to her blood pressure properly. You do not have time to sit there and dwell about one OSCE station when you have another seven. And that sounds tough, but I'm saying it from like personal experience. It's really important that you actually are resilient in OSCEs because they will go fast 
and it'll be done before you know it. I feel like in a nutshell, OSCEs are all about muscle memory. The more you practice, the better you get at it and it'll become second nature to talk to patients and to do examinations on them. I'm gonna end this video here. Thank you so much for watching. I hope listening to me talk about my experiences and my OSCE stories um, were entertaining and I also hope that you were able to learn from my mistakes and hopefully these tips help you do well in your OSCE. Also, a massive thank you to OSCE Stop for sponsoring this video. Make sure you check them out. I'll leave all their links down in the description box. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon for another video. Bye!